Did you ever take a photo where the colors didn't look like you remembered? Where the whites looked muddy or yellow, or even not yellow enough? It all has to do with color temperature. Things look cooler or warmer depending on the light. Your eyes can compensate for it, but your camera can't. Unless you tell it to, that is. In photography, this is called white balance. White balance is one of the basics of digital photography. In short, when you're talking about still digital photography, white balance is shifting or correcting the colors in a photo in an attempt to capture what the eye sees, or possibly even make it a little more pleasing. On most popular DSLRs, you have auto white balance, several white balance presets, usually a manual white balance preset, and sometimes you have K or Kelvin as an option. Now let's talk about each of these. Auto is pretty obvious. The camera automatically makes an educated guess as to what white balance you need by what it sees. Auto on current generation cameras is pretty good. It is vastly improved from DSLRs made just five or six years ago. The advantage of using auto is as you go through changing lighting conditions, the camera will do its best to adapt. This way, you aren't spending time fussing with the settings. Next are presets. The presets on the Nikon D300S are pretty standard and are incandescent, fluorescent, direct sunlight, flash, cloudy, and shade. These are self-explanatory. Incandescent is for when you're in incandescent lighting. Direct sunlight is for when you're in direct sunlight, and so on. The advantage of the presets is that they allow you to change the white balance from scene to scene with minimal camera fussing. On some cameras, you can even fine tune within the presets. Preset manual, I think Canon calls it custom, allows you to set white balance by taking a picture of something that is white or neutral gray, or by copying the white balance from a photo on a memory card. This gives you the most accuracy, but it does take an extra step or two. And it also won't adapt for you as you're moving around. K, or Kelvin, is where you choose a color temperature from a list of values. I didn't mention it before, but color temperature is measured in Kelvin, so each light source has a range of values. This method is fairly complex because you must know what Kelvin value your lighting situation falls into. It also might not work so well if you're using a flash or in certain other lighting conditions. Now, with so many options, how do you choose? And what if you're moving around and you want to make sure your white balance keeps up with you? Well, if you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of time or the white balance is changing quickly, you can shoot in RAW where you'll be able to change the white balance later on or in post-processing. Another situation you can run into is mixed lighting with flash photography. And what professionals do in that situation is they gel their flash with one of these. And this way you can gel the flash to match the ambient lighting so that they are illuminating the subject with the same color temperature as the background. Now, not only is white balance one of the basics of digital photography, it is super important. It can make or break a photo. Some of the reasons you must pay attention to it are to make skin tones look natural and to avoid color casts in your image caused by tungsten or fluorescent lighting. Because nobody likes to see overly yellow images from incandescent lighting or to have their daylight images look too blue. The best thing you can do as a photographer to assure good white balance is to practice with your camera. That way you'll know what to expect from your presets and from auto white balance, and you'll be able to navigate the preset manual white balance to give you the most accuracy. Now that was a lot of information. <laughs> so if you have any questions about white balance or about anything else, please let me know.